Family Game Night is an event that we host often. And the reason for that is because it's all about the family. And so what we're going to do is that we're going to prepare for this event in advance. And you know what? I would love to have you right here in the kitchen. So let's get ready. Let's get all the food prepared. And I'll give you some little peeks at some of the things that went on that night. The rush is on trying to get ready for uh, family night. And so at this point, we're going to put together the waffle mixture. And uh, I'm doing that now. And I'm putting it into a pitcher so it's going to be easy to pour into the waffle iron. So we're going to get that done. Okay, so I'm thinking I'm going to need at least three or four times the recipe. And the recipe calls for three-fourths cup of all-purpose flour. And that makes about four to five of the waffles. So I'm going to do a cup and a half, a cup and a half, and a cup and a half. So let's uh, start there. Got my flour. Okay, that's one. Two, three, and a half cup. One, two, and three. That's where we're going to start. Three times the recipe. Okay, now from there, that's not to say we're not going to come back and make more, but for now, that's the mixture. And I'll come back and mix up some more later. Okay, I need uh, three tablespoons of sugar. So I've got my sugar here. So let's put in one. One. Two. Three. Three tablespoons of sugar. Okay, I need a fourth teaspoon, that's one, one-fourth, so we need three-fourths. And here's my fourth, a baking soda. So, there's one, two, three. Three-fourths teaspoons of baking soda. I need three cups of milk. Holds two. Let me first uh, give all this a little stir. Use my whisk and just whisk it up a little bit. Make sure everything's nice and well mixed. That's it. I'm going to need three eggs to start off. Okay. All right, so we need three cups of milk. That's two. And one, so there's our three cups. Okay, we're gonna need our three eggs. Okay, I got my fork. Whisk these up just a little bit. All right, we got the eggs. I'm gonna need a fourth cup, three fourths cup of cornstarch. This is a new one, so. I'm hoping my fourth cup will go down in here. Let's see. Good night. No, this is my half cup. Okay, there's a half, and now we need a fourth. All right, so there's our three-fourths cup of cornstarch, and we're going to start to give all of this a nice stir. Now, you know, we're not going to overmix it because we want our waffles to be nice and fluffy and tender. Okay, I need some, I need a half teaspoon of baking powder. And let's get that baking powder out, there it is. So I need 
uh, half teaspoon, whole teaspoon. And I'm actually going to put it in the eggs. There's a half. And we need that little fourth. And our fourth. There's our baking powder. And we need a three-fourths teaspoon of sea salt or any type of salt that you like. So I'm going to use my take a bit out. There we go. That's going to go in there too. We need butter. About a half stick of softened butter. Mine is room temperature. I'm going to put a half stick in our cup, put it in the microwave, and um, melt this down. And we'll be ready to add this. The butter is going to go in here. And then, last, we'll put the egg mixture in. Okay, we got our butter melted. Like I said, I'm going to put add it to the milk and flour mixture because it's pretty hot and I don't want my eggs cooked. And I'm gonna hold on to this because I know I'm gonna to have to do all of this one more time. And uh, I'm gonna put the other part of the butter in there and give all of this a good stir. Now, if you wanna use your hand mixer, you certainly can, but let me warn you, you don't want to over mix it. So when you do it by hand, you're less likely to do that. So I'm just making sure I have all the flour off the bottom, and then I'll give this a good stir. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, in here I have my eggs, and we're gonna add our vanilla. I'm gonna add in three teaspoons of vanilla. two, three. And you know, if you like a little extra, you can certainly do that. But we're going to keep all of this handy because I know I'm going to have to come back and do it again. Okay, look it up. And we're going to add our eggs to the mixture. I think I'm going to go ahead and use the hand mixer just a minute. Okay, this is going to be very quick. You can it on low, but I do want to make sure that it is well mixed. Look at that texture change very quickly. And I've got my container here. I'm going to pour this triple batch into the container. And I'm hoping I have enough to get another whole triple batch in there. And that was a triple. Now we're going to do it again. Cheesy potatoes are absolutely delicious. And the great thing about this particular recipe is the fact that we're going to do it in a crock pot. And uh, we're going to be able to put them on the morning of family game night. And by dinner time, yum, they're going to be ready. Now, what you're going to need, you're going to need some frozen cubed hash browns because that's going to help to save you some time and um, you'll be able to put your your potatoes in uh, I like the ones that already have the onions and the green peppers in there even though I, I'm going to go ahead and add some additional green peppers and onions as well and I'm going to shred them because I don't want them to be as visible 
as uh, maybe if, if it were just a big guy and I'd probably have larger pieces, but because it's a family, we're gonna keep them small so the little people will not be able to pick them out. Now, in addition to that, we'll need some uh, milk. You can use regular milk, whole milk, you can use evaporated milk, or you can even use, if you have any half and half, or some cream, you can use that as well. I'm also going to put in a can of cream of celery soup, as well as a can of cream of cheddar cheese. And um, that's gonna add a delicious flavor. I also want about a half cup of diced onions, as well as a half cup of diced celery. And I'm going to add in some Velveeta, and uh, I'm gonna put in probably about half a box of Velveeta and that's going to add that nice creaminess. Now this is where it's going to get you, is that we're going to add about a half cup of uh, French onion dip. Yes, what you find in the refrigerator section, the French onion dip. We're going to put in a half cup or so, maybe even a little extra of that, depending on the taste. And I'm also going to add in about the same amount of sour cream because all of that's going to add to the creaminess. Now, let me tell you what I did find since I'm doing this after the, the, the event. I found that um, if you prepare this in advance, put it all together in advance, the flavors will have a chance to meld through the dish much better than just putting it in just before you want to cook it. And so what I would, I think if I did this again, I would probably put it into a Ziploc bag, mix everything, le zhuzh it, and put it into the refrigerator overnight. And then that way, the next morning, I would be able to get up and put it into the crock pot and have it ready to go. Now keep your Pam on hand because you're gonna wanna spray that crock pot really good before you start this dish. Velveeta just has a way of making a really nice base for a nice cheesy sauce. And so I'm adding, uh, I had just a little bit of heavy whipping cream in the refrigerator, so I thought, okay, well, I'll use whatever is in there first. And then whatever additional milk that I may need, I will use whole milk. So I'm adding the the heavy whipping cream first. I'm going to put it into the microwave and uh, stir and stir until I get a nice smooth sauce. And then we'll start to add all the other ingredients. can decide at this point, looking at the mixture, whether or not you want to add additional cheese. That option's up to you. The more cheese you add, obviously, it's going to be a little thicker. And toward the end, you may find that you may need to add just a touch more milk.
Welcome to Ebony IV and Time. This is a place for home cooks. We love being in our kitchens. We love using our kitchen and our food and our recipes and our kind words to build our family and certainly build our community. So if you like those kind of things and you like to be in the kitchen with somebody else to have someone in here who loves what you like, what you love, then this is a place for you. I hope you'll take a moment. You'll subscribe because we do these kind of things all the time. I also hope that you will also tap that little like button and give me a thumbs up. So family absolutely loves green beans and in fact that seems to be the favorite go-to uh, green vegetable when we're having any type of family function so we're going to put together a huge pot of green beans and i promise you it's very easy and everyone is going to like it Is that I kept the onions pretty whole. I did not dice them up because the one thing that the family does not like is lots of onion. But we need the onion flavor in order to make the green beans delicious. So I'm just taking two, taking one onion, cutting it in half. I'm going to let it sizzle in the oil and then we'll be able to put these green beans together. But just before I serve them, I'll make sure I take those onions out. My plan is to place the green beans into a smaller size crock pot just before time to serve. I hope you have enjoyed today's family game night. You know, bringing family together is always a wonderful time. And I hope that you, as my YouTube family, that you have certainly enjoyed the journey. We've done it from start to finish. And home cooks, if I can do it, you can do it. So I'm looking forward to seeing you again right here in the kitchen. See you soon.